The name is Law Nation. An observation of MLK Day. Appreciate each and every last one of you all for tuning in for this moment. Hope all is well with you and you and you. And all that's listening. Let's go. Got news, good news, good news. Shout out to those that's understanding. Good news is, you know, we got some guys that's going to be elevated. Go. Yup. They really say it ain't no party like a cowboy party. Yeah. You know, there's Avanti Collins and plus Xavier Rose playing and coaches interview today. Uh conversation. Well, the coach will interview on a, on another day, but not today. I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts on that. Shout out to the Dallas Cowboys. And believe it or not, the Hot Boys are back. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. What's good? Hey. Cowboy Nation and everyone that's listening, my name is Law Nation, and we talk Cowboys football and sports topics all around the world. We are the most uh, loved team because, you know, everybody kind of tune in to us. And, and believe it or not, in order to hate something, you have to love it, right, <laughs> first. So uh, that's why we are the most love slash hate team. You know, uh, a lot of people uh, hate to see us shine, but that's just how it goes. Uh, so news hit earlier today while I was out with family. Appreciate everybody uh, that's tuning in. I thank y'all so much for your love and adulations. News hit earlier today that uh, Jonathan Hankins is now uh, elevated and he will play today. Shout out to him. Uh, I can't wait to see him out there on the field. We need a big boy down inside, right? Size matter for those who don't understand that. And they said that LVE, Leighton Vanderesh. Put your hands together for Leighton Vanderesh. He'll be another guy that's out there. And one of the things that you look at when you see him uh, in his scouting report or what have you, um, you know, he, he's a cover linebacker. And one of the things that being a thorn in our side in his absence. Here's someone covering the hook to flat. <laughs> and, of course, as of lately, he's been a guy that come down and feel, shoot through the A or B gap, or meet him at the hole. So <laughs> hopefully we get more of that. Shout out to you, Scott Simpkins, for the first Super Chat, man. Shout out to you, man. You know, I'm on, my, I'm on the way home. You know, oh, you're on your way there, Scott. Appreciate him. Shout out to him. Appreciate you for your support there and, you know, your love and adulations. Uh, another thing that I want to talk about is this is a pivotal game. The Cowboys, against all odds, uh, we, we got to figure it out. Of course, the banter, uh, the banter of uh, the Cowboys haven't won since 1993 on the road. That's something to think about. The Cowboys win dark colored uh, jerseys, the navy blue. That's something to think about. And the nemesis of the Cowboys, Tom Brady, who seems to be perfect in all thy way against the Cowboys, 7-0. and We got to figure that out, right? And, of course, we get it, right? Everything looks upon that the Cowboys got to figure things out. We are the only team. We are the only team that a lot of people focus in on. And, unfortunately, uh, what's good for the goose, good for the gander. And, and I'm going to tell you guys, in the hearts of hearts, don't nobody care about the Cowboys' feelings. No, no, they don't care about X, Y, and Z. They just want the results. So my thing is, and I got to say this, this is in the title. The NFL, horrible job as it relates to tampering. Tampering is is something that they frown upon when owners of other teams or uh, general managers of other teams 
try to sway the thoughts of a player, right? Why they within contract or why they are still with said team. You can't start lobbying for a player openly. So if it's for the players, for dogs should, this rule should be for the coaching staff. To me, I think that it does a disservice for Dan Quinn to get the phone call to say, hey, dog, we need you for an interview over there in Denverland while the postseason is still going on. A lot of people will look at this and say, nah, law, this is an opportunity, an unbelievable opportunity. Well, no. I will say this. The NFL need to regroup, relook into that, and to me, just to me, they need to have these interviews, they need to have these conversations once the Super Bowl is over with. The offseason is long enough so that these guys can come in and have a clear conscience of what needs to be done. Not thinking about an interview. Not thinking about, hey, can I do this or can I do that? Shout out to you, Mickey. Says, law and family, it's game day time. Let's feast. You know, uh, let's get this dub. DC for life. Appreciate you, Mickey. You know, I appreciate you so much for that uh, super chat. Appreciate you give you another horn. They need to. Now, I get it, right? The Rooney rule is in full effect, too. They're going to interview the 49ers coach, D'Amico Ryans, or what have you. But we all know that the Denver Broncos are really going to lean on Dan Quinn, right? And for him to have an interview this Friday, it just throws everything off for two weeks. When we win today... And when we play the next the next week, right? I'm I'm already declaring, decreeing that we will win. But they need to have that after the season. It makes no sense for them to not if that the case and if that the scenario, then once the regular season is over with, trade should still be available now. We should be able to flirt with players. We should be able to pick up the phone and say, hey, D-Hop, although you're out of the playoff, we need to bring you in for a cup of coffee. You can't have it both ways, Cowboy Nation and NFL and the pundits and the critics, because that's the situation. I need to have a focus mind set for Dan Quinn to only think about the Buccaneers. But now he's looking at it like, man, I can catch a parachute on the way down. If things don't work out well, I can land this job over here in Denverland. Huh. Bear 24 says, finally, Collins brought up. Yeah, and, and this should be a good situation. I like Avanti Collins, uh, especially with the run. He, he's like when you look at tape, you look at film, you see he's not Terrence Steele-esque, right? But he's like a poor man's Terrence Steele-esque, you know, <laughs> if I can say that in those ways, man. Uh, Bobby Jones says, Law, I'm on the way to Tampa Bay now ready to watch four ball out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Shout out to you, Lauren. Thank you. you. You there. Appreciate you. They should have some restrictions. Yeah, yeah. As mode is, yeah. So if y'all agree with Law, just type L-A-W in the chat. Because I want focused mind. I want my guys, all of my troops, to be focused in, and I get it, we would say, well, a lot of these are professionals. Bull sugar. When you are getting an opportunity for life-changing events, meaning that you got to move your whole entire family, your whole entire family, to the whole side of the world, though there are things that goes into the mindset when you interview. Nervousness for one. Hey, school district looking for a house and all of the other stuff. There are a lot of ancillary things that goes around. Especially when you have the interview mind sake and you got one of the things that you need to accomplish. And that's winning the, these type of games. You can't be at war saying, oh, let me take the phone call to see and check on the kids. No, you in war. You're supposed to be structured to only think about the war. This is what this game is about. This is almost like warfare. This is. So the NFL need to restructure this. It makes no sense for a team. Let the AI speak. I really appreciate the AI today. Java underscore cafecito $10. 
What's up law and cowboys nation? I always hit the like button as soon as I tune in. Let's go cowboys. No doubt. I appreciate you so much for your love and adulations for this. I uh, appreciate y'all for jumping in. You know, shout out to the notification squad. It let me know that any time of the day uh, or night I, I go live, jump live. You guys are here live and present. I appreciate that. Even the haters. Uh, ain't nothing like a cowboy party. Yes, indeed. Look at all of the people. I see it nothing but laws there. L-A-W. I appreciate y'all for agreeing. So here, here's the thing. Tonight's game will be uh, a game that we need to see our guys run with a purpose. They should have went back all, all this past week and a little bit of the weekend. And look at things like this. Pay attention to what's going on in your surroundings. Pay attention of the terrain. Look how other teams. I, I, I want you guys to understand this too. You learn more from your failures than your success. So I think that they should have looked at all of the tape that was necessary. Appreciate you, Mike. Uh, thank you for the 100 stars. What's happening? Everything, fam. Appreciate you. Um, this is what they should do. They should literally look at the Washington game, pull out some of the positive things, look at the negative things, and see how they can regroup those things, and then look at all of the teams that played recently in the playoffs. And if they comb through the tape, they would find out that, hey, all of these games, regardless of whether or not a team was up by 27 points or up by 7 or 10, it come down to the last minutes of the game. There's no, there's no insurance or assurance as it relates to this game. There's none. So you got to take care of business. Appreciate you, Jabba. Thank you for becoming a member. So you got to make sure that you look at this and say, hey, this game is a game of inches. We got to play the fields when necessary. Hey, if it's time to punt the ball, we can't be over aggressive. Hey, when the ball hits your hands, catch it on the on the punt drive or the kickoff return. It may be it, it may be time to understand the language of the math or understanding the math. That's a better way to say it. Ball starting at the 25, or you can try to take it out, and a penalty or a flag can happen, and now you're at the 8, or now you're at the 10, or, or you're at the 15. At least if you take the knee on the kickoff, you will be at the 25. Those are things that you got to consider. We're playing a game of fields, field positions. Alex, appreciate you. Shout out to you and uh, Shaniqua Puki and Ray Ray. Appreciate you. Let me let, me let the AI say that one. <laughs> I appreciate it. Fundamental football. Yes, indeed. Shout out to Alex. Alex Limon is $2. Shout out law Shaniqua Puki Ray Ray Kumiqua DC4L. DC4L, we need them all, baby. Chip Hall, appreciate you, fam. Thank you so much for your support over here on Cowboys Land. Uh, 100 stars, and he uh, put down the fact that let's go, Cowboy Nation. Tonight, we will win our first road playoff game in 30 years. Here we go, baby. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Chip. You know, uh, that attribute was brought to you by Chip, by the way. I had to reach out to the, uh, the the coders over there, and uh, and have them to insert those type of things so that we can uh, at least have them to participate on the Facebook. So shout out to Chip, thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> Cowboys for life, James Carter. Yeah, yeah. So back to this over here. Let's go into this uh, conversational pool. Why is Xavier Rhodes so good for us? To, to make sure that he make things okay and correct. Because when we look back at the tape, and I know that we want to burn this one, but we look at my guy Trayvon Mullen. He kind of tried to get the jab on him. He didn't get his head around, and that was a big play for the actual Washington team last game. We need for our guys, if they're going to play close to the LOS, to be aggressive, to make that redirect. And also, when you look at this and you say to yourself, all right, can we get any help on the opposite side of Trayvon Diggs? Yes. 
And that will be Xavier Rhodes. I don't know his uh, uh, plan time or snap time of how many snaps they're going to give him. But I, I do understand this right here. A new broom can sweep the floor good, but that old broom can get those corners. Appreciate you, Tom A. Thank you for the 99 stars. You know, I appreciate you, Tommy. Thank you so much. Uh, let them let them go to war. Yeah, let's take it. Let's take it that way. This team, everybody got to be on the same page. And when I say that, I'm not saying that loosely. I, I'm really saying it from the heart that these boys got to understand the gravity of this game and know that. Shout out to you, James Carter. Appreciate you. He said he liked the videos. I like that you like the videos, you know. Uh, but <laughs> but we got to understand that, ladies and gentlemen, that this game, there's no more tomorrow. So you got to put it all on the line. You know what Lady lady uh, 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 Queen would say? You want to say, she's your queen to be. When she say, let them hang. Tonight, you got to let them hang. You do. You got to let them things hang because there will be. No more tomorrow if your team don't take care of business. And there will be no excuses for this team. Now, there could be excuses for the Chargers. There could be excuses for the uh, Vikings. They are allowed to have excuses. And excuse me, they, they are allowed to have excuses for Miami or any other team that lost in the playoffs. But there's for dogs sure no excuses for this Dallas Cowboys team. Just turn on the TV and watch any ladder network. Four ladder, three ladder, don't matter. There's zero excuses. So on this day, on Dr. Martin Luther King Day, they just got to go out there and have their dreams in line, have their thoughts together. And perform at their max peak. Uh, speaking of that, let me see if I got this audio right here. Appreciate y'all so much for tuning in. Uh, we got to play a clean, clean, good game. And that's just the bottom line. All right. So as I'm getting the audio prepared, there's only one guy that I've seen been on the uh, been on the side of Dak Prescott. And that's Matt Hasselback. I think that's his name. But let's listen to this audio right quick on how Chris Godwin thinks of all of this about our team, who we got to play. Let's go. And. Shout out to these boys on ESPN. Of course, career playoff wins for Tom Brady, 35. Our franchise don't have 35 playoff wins. Let's listen. He sat down with RG3 before facing the Cowboys. What's the difference this week as opposed to week one? Can y'all hear the audio? Against Dallas? I think the biggest difference is that we're a lot more ready to handle the adversity that's going to come. We've dealt with all of it. You know, we've had, um, you know, fourth quarter victories where we were down by 10 plus points in the last five minutes. It's like, statistically, it probably shouldn't have happened. But it's like, we've been through that adversity. Like, we know that we'll fight to the end. Right. Understand that and understand that we put the work in and that we have all we have our guys. Let's go out there and play. Let it loose. Anything specifically that you see from Dallas's defense that you're willing to, to go ahead and drop? Drop on the national airways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, to be honest, like, I think, you know, they, they've done a really good job. And you know, I think that everyone understands, like, you know, who the Cowboys are. I think they're a really talented team. I think their defense, they do a really good job. Like, they, they get after the quarterback. I think offensively, they're always dangerous. Whenever you got Dak, whenever you got CD, you know, Tony Pollard's had a phenomenal year, and you still got Zeke. It's like, it's going to be a great game. Yeah. I think that. Before we go into more details of this, shout out to uh, ESPN uh, uh, for this take right here. Um, the opposing teams, they understand the gravity of Dak Prescott more than some of the Cowboy fans, right? Some Cowboy fans, ah, he's trash, man. He's ASS, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he's horrible. Shoot, the opposing team, they looking at it like, shoot, that dude's a monster to deal with, especially when he's hot. That's the reality of it. Dak went hot. He can carve you up. I've seen him put 455 yards up on a team before. I think he thrown for 500 yards before. So y'all, y'all better get it together. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look Marco say he's trash, y'all. He's trash. Man, that's some valuable trash right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when he's hot. Shoot. That, you know, I think that we got the, you know, the game, the TV slot that we do for a reason. You know, it's like 
We want to see Tom versus America's team. You know, we got our, our guys, they got their guys. It's going to be a, you know, it's going to be a beautiful night for football. And, you know, it's the playoffs. It's what everything, it's what all of us about. So he literally said, we're going to see Tom versus the America's team. Now, he knows he's not a fool. He's not a fool. And this is Christopher Godwin. Hey, man, you know, they ain't the America's team. Well, you're not. You're not privy to naming your yourself a nickname that was given to the Cowboys. Cowboys didn't walk around and say, hey, call us America's team. Hey, call us America's team. No. You don't give yourself nicknames. That's why I kind of like, hey, hot boys, hot boys. You know, but it is what it is. Shout out to those guys. They're young. They're young. Uh, Mickey, revenge tour loading. Yes, indeed. Let's go. That's just what it is. Dollars, revenge tour loading, fire. That's good stuff right there out of Robert and Chris, but I respectfully disagree with Chris Godwin when he says everybody understands who the Cowboys are. I have no idea right now who the Cowboys are. It depends on the took week. A big dump it's on us. Very yeah, right. up and down. Rex, when you watch these Cowboys right now. <laughs> In another playoff game, in a year with tons of expectation, after laying another egg last week, how much pressure is on this Cowboys team? Oh, I think there's a lot of pressure on them, Sam. And, and you're right, like the lack of professionalism that you see, how, how it's just up one minute, down the other one, and, and, and things. And here's the, a crazy stat, all right? Dak Prescott, going into the season, so I'm looking at why is this team playing like this? So I look at Dak Prescott, because to me, I always think Dak's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. All right. This year, though, he's thrown more interceptions than any quarterback. All right. So I'm like, this ha why? Why is it happening? And, and was I wrong about him before? No. No. He was, he, he had in NFL history the third Listen. lowest interception rate of any quarterback that's ever played. Third, okay, of all time, only behind Aaron Rodgers. Right and Patrick Mahomes, so that's pretty dang good. So what is it this year? I don't. All right, so let, let me jump in front of this. Uh, you know, let me jump in front of this. You get rid of a, a premier wide receiver, right? And out of, out of Amari Cooper, and we talking about this before the game, right? So that we can context all of this or contextualize all of this, ladies and gentlemen. Hear me out. Have you guys ever broken any parts of your hand? You know, and expect to be the same is not happening. And I love the fact that Matt Hasselbeck, I think that's his name, brought, we're going to bring this up, and I've been bringing this up for a couple of weeks now. But let's listen to this guy right here. You know, I looked at these back-to-back -back plays against Washington. Washington. If we can show them up here. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what is this here? So here they come. First play right here. I'm watching Dak. And he's sitting back, and I'm like, okay, he's, he's out here. Oh, uh, he's got to scramble. Get rid of it. What are you doing, Dak? You're, nobody blows the top off of things anymore. I think he does because nobody You're blows up the top off. Like, oh, this is going to be fun. And he makes a house call. Wow. So Dak, as smart as he is, and, and I know he's a smart player. And so what is it? I think he misses Amari Cooper. Yeah. I think he does because nobody blows up the Amari top Cooper? off. I'm going to bring up Amari Cooper because nobody blows the top off of things anymore. And there All right, so I'm glad Law got some good memory, baby. I'm glad I do. Woo -woo. That same coach that's speaking now, that same guy that's saying that, hey, Dak Prescott is missing Amari Cooper. Well, a few years ago, he was saying that Amari Cooper was trash, right? He was saying that Amari Cooper is soft. So here's the thing. What I'm trying to tell y'all, ladies and gentlemen, I got to be the equalizer out here because a lot of people listen to the four ladder, the three ladder network, and they spit the same thing out to us. So I got to be the guy that stands on the hill, right? I got to be the one guy. That a lot of people will say, hey, man, you know, law, you're delusional. Law, you are insane. Law, you are crazy, right? Law, you don't have itty, itty, itty. 
objective analysis as it relates to the Dallas Cowboys. But I come here to tell you, just as well as Jon Snow is with the sword in his hand, ready to fight everyone. Lo and behold, you got your boy over here, law to the nation, ready to fight everybody. Not just over the quarterback, but over anybody who representing the silver and blue with the star on the side of the helmet. I'm going down. With, I'm going down with all of the blows I can find. Yes, Trev, what's good? Much love, Law Nation. You bring the truth. I appreciate you. You know. What the truth? You can't handle the truth. Yes, indeed, man. Shout out to you, man. Thank you so much, man. His name Rick Ryan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go, let's go. Cause we're gonna finish this up, and I gotta uh, really uh, drive this home. So, so let's go with it. They're Appreciate gonna count it. on T. Y. Hilton, who's like yeah. how old? Thirty-three. He, Thirty-three he years old. I, I, I can explain it. I, I can explain. I can explain. First of all, here's my guy. Play good football against good football teams. Okay, they play to the level of their competition. That's a knock on them. Okay, yeah, yeah, Dak yeah, Prescott. Absolutely. Everyone's gonna step up on TV and be like, "Oh, he's got 15 interceptions. Got more interceptions than he's ever had. More interceptions than anybody else." How many of you have had uh, surgery on your thumb during an NFL season? Like, it's a real thing. It's a I wish real, I could see their face. It's a real freaking thing, okay? So, like, I'm not sitting here trying to make excuses for that. But, like, that's a thing, okay? Like, let's not act like it's not a thing. Last week against Washington, what I saw, okay? And I have lived this. When you're in this gray area as a player, how much am I playing today? We can't really, we just talked about the Chargers. Are you playing the whole first mm -hmm. half? Are you in the second half? You can't be one foot in and one foot out as an NFL football player, especially as a quarterback. He, to me, looked like a guy that lacked focus last week. Is he a good player? Yeah, he's a good player. Did he look like a good player against Washington? No, he looked terrible. Is he terrible? No. He looked like a dude that was like half into it. Like he's already thinking about next week. We already know that the Dallas Cowboys love to talk about teams they're playing two weeks from now. <laughs> yes, they are. I already know that. Yeah. That's yeah. a problem. You don't see that out of the really strong mentally tough teams. This is, this, you're going to hate this, but this is a fixable thing. Oh, gosh. Okay? There we go. <laughs> Dak Prescott's a, a little good, late. Dak Prescott's a good quarterback, and I believe he'll have a good game to, uh, Monday night against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That is a lesson that he had to learn the hard way, that I hope the Dallas Cowboys learn the hard way. You can't just show up, and because the decal on your side of your helmet's really cool and really important, and that means you're going to play well. It doesn't work that way. Well, how, you many, times are we gonna, how many times, Matthew, are we going to wait for them to learn that well, lesson? Because well, it's not just, I, I'd be in. I would buy what you're selling if it was a one-time deal, but we've seen it over and over. You're 100%. No doubt, no doubt, man, this is good stuff. All right, uh, Lady Jessica, appreciate you for your support hey for right now man uh let me see some hearts emojis in the chat and if you guys can do me a huge favor keep the engagement up i know you guys are busy i know we got tons of things to do but if you guys can do those things hit hit the heart in the in the description box or hit the heart in the chat area and uh hit the like button for your boy, you know, I, I'd be going back looking at some of the videos here and YouTube sending me out an analysis report and the, and the likes been down. But they said, hey, the viewership is good, but nobody liking it. So I know you guys are busy. Hit the like button. I ain't too proud to beg over here. Alex says, uh, is this team off season to switch Izzy back to corner? We seem to be good on safety side, though. Uh, no, uh, I, I look at it like Hooker is a bridge guy. Next year will be his last year. You want somebody to to fill in that voided area at safety. And the Cowboys got – and that's a good question, though, by the way, Alex. You know, that's a real good question. But here's the thing. The Cowboys got to either uh, – S H I T or get off the pot with Dono. And, and I really like Donovan Wilson. I really do. I think he bring a lot to the table, but they got to pay that man. He's in a contract year. And my, my thing is from here, you drafted Izzy. So we need to see Izzy at that spot at safety. Now, since he's been for the last two years, been groomed to be that safety. I don't want to keep switching a guy from safety to corner, safety to corner. No, no. I, I, I just don't believe that that's the right move for them. Yeah, yeah. y'all get those likes up for your boy, man. Get those likes up for your boy. And here's another thing. I'm going to hit this one right here. 
He's off a little bit, but Randy Moss, I, I like his analysis, even though he, he just as country as I am. But let's listen to Randy right quick. I'm going to fast forward to Randy. Quarterback going against the GOAT, Tom Brady. Seven straight games with an interception, to your point, Rex. So we just did a feature on Pollard, his family, the barbecue, all that stuff looking good. I'm interested in seeing you talking about the pressure on Mike McCarthy. How about the pressure on Kellen Moore? You have to yeah. play a, a great game plan together because if your quarterback struggling going against Tom Brady, I'm expected to see a lot of Zeke, a lot of Pollard, yeah. and let this offensive line help Zach out. But yeah. you cannot put all Zach. the pressure on Zach Prescott going against Tom Brady, the GOAT, because if he's not holding on to the ball in the biggest time of the year in the playoffs, man, would this yeah. be another first-round exit for the Cowboys? Well, we'll see. You know now, Dak been playing for seven years. Come on, Randy Miles. Get his name right, man. He going to call him Zach Prescott. <laughs> <laughs> now that was the thing, really. Real talk, man. They, they used to keep call. They used to keep calling Dak Zach his rookie year, but people are like, hey, man, he's Dak. But the pressure should be on Kelly Moore. Like, it, real, real talk. This is crazy. Real talk, man. Let me let me tell y'all real truth. Let me let me, let me take away what I just said. Let me take away what I just said. If Kelly Moore just have his philosophy and formula, there should be no pressure. There should be no pressure on him. <laughs> there literally should be no pressure on him. The design, the blueprint is already there. You know what it takes to win games. You know what works. I don't think that the Buccaneers are capable of stopping 14 personnel. Stopping 13 personnel. If he did his homework, there will be no pressure. He should be able to walk out there as the offensive coordinator and say, all right, I got Tony Pollard, who's explosive on the edge. Oh, excuse me, we got C.D. Lamb. I know for sure he should have a bag of tricks in his head to know that, hey, on the end around, not the double reverse end around, but just the base end around with C.D. Lamb, that's eight yards I got. He's averaging eight yards. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be angry and upset the first play of the game. C.D. Lamb, end around. That's eight yards. The second play would be second and two. Then you can go half-back slam up the gut or a toss to the edge. It should be no pressure if he did his homework. Don't you guys know the people that cheats in life, in school, the people that didn't study in school, I'm just using something tangible that we all can reach on, lean on. Those are the people that sweat and be nervous and worry. But when you walk in there with bold and grace and mercy, and if you know that you know that you know, there won't be a nervous bone in your body. There will be no pressure. It's like shooting a free throw in basketball. Let's go. Let's go with it. Cowboys are a 12 and 5 football team. Two years right. in a row. Yeah. 12 and 5 football team. And what's happened is the team has picked up das Dak Prescott. You want to throw an interception, you want to have all these problems. We can still get wins through our defense in our running game. They're going up against a team I like that his has analysis. to have the quarterback carry the team. That's the difference right here. And it's almost like I'd have it the other way around because if I'm Mike McCarthy, 35 playoff wins for Tom Brady, yeah, he was on some pretty good teams, okay? Those he are was. his wins. Listen. I'd show him dirt and balls like he usually, like he's done in the past. I'd show him making bad decisions. I'd show him off, off schedule with Mike Evans because he's got his own problems too. The Dallas Cowboys are the better team in this yeah. game and they just have to show up and do that. Dak Prescott is a big issue. Yes, How are they going to control that? How can Dak control it? Because he's got this thing about risk or reward that he constantly talks about. I'm trying to make plays. Stop trying to make plays. There okay? you go. Let Zeke and Pollard make those plays, and the Cowboys should be able to handle the Buccaneers. Brew, Brew, Brew you talk about, hey, you know, Dallas is clearly the, the uh, better team. Uh, they're clearly the more talented team. We're going to find out Monday yeah. night who the better team is. Yeah. I right, right. Um, 1,000 troops on this, and this is not a knock at Dak Prescott. Don't force it. Don't rush it. Don't force it. Don't rush it. Tom Brady, Tom Brady 
his first three Super Bowls, it wasn't about him. It was about Teddy. No, Teddy just gave y'all. Look, he was there on, on a few of those Super Bowls. But it becomes a shouting match when everybody wants to put labels and categories on a player. That is the 1,100% issue with the Dallas Cowboys. They get into this fist to cuffs of whether or not a player is, is elite, great, good, average, bad, trash. They get into that match and they want to the respect. They want to get the certificate before it is time. And I, I come to grips with even Cowboy fans. I go back and forth like, look, man, Dak don't have to be elite. Dak don't have to be great. He don't have to be good. Dak just got to be Dak Prescott. Rain Dakota Prescott. There are more quarterbacks that lifted up that Lombardi trophy that don't have elite status quo to their name. But people want to get into this fighting match, right? Of, hey, man, my quarterback is elite. My quarterback is perfect. No. <sighs> play the game to win the game. Don't play the game for the stats. Don't play the game for the punters. And that's what the critics like to do, ladies and gentlemen. That's what they like to do. After year one, hey, man, you know, hey, he's only doing that because Zeke. And then when Zeke missed six or seven games year two, hey, it was six games basically. Hey, man, you see, I told y'all, but we were still nine and seven. Nine and seven. With an offensive line, y'all remember? Was that uh, the Atlanta Falcons game in 2017? I said, my goodness. Adrian Claiborne looked like Reggie White. <sighs> Run the Rock. Yo, yeah. newsflash. Newsflash. Shout out to you, she goes. <laughs> Appreciate you for your support. Appreciate you for your support. It is what it is. Let's go. SH Eagles waste basket five dollars. Wait, so they activated Jensen from my R. He still has to wait three weeks before he can play, right? Uh, I don't, I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works, but I can tell you, yeah, they did activate him. Here's the thing. Here's the thing that I got to say this right quick. Shout out to you. Sims Trey for the 25 stars. Appreciate you. Stars go hard. I appreciate you. 25 of them. 25 lighters on the dresser. Yes, sir. Here's my thing on it. John Elway, consider elite thrower of the ball, right? Consider elite in most categories. He didn't win his Super Bowl until it wasn't all about him. Until they got Terrell Davis. Until they got an elite type of defense to put around him. And then he was able to get two Super Bowl rings. The craziest thing of it all, Brett Favre, when he won his Super Bowl, they had to put Dorsey Levins. They had a crazy good situation with kickoff returns and punt returns. He don't win that Super Bowl without those boys, right? They asked him to do less. It's not a sin to do less. And understand to utilize his arm talent to a degree. So what I'm looking for, the Cowboys, dog, don't let this be a situation where, it's, hey, it's all on Dak. No, Kelly Moore, you got Tony Pollard, you got C.D. Lamb. You got your doggone guy that's on a contract year, Dalton Schultz. Figure it out. Run the ball. That should be the main thing. Let's get third and shorts. Let's play field position. If the defense want to wear hot boy chains, trash and trickets, or whatever they want to wear, then, hey, play the fields, punt it date. Say, hot boys, do your job. <laughs> hot boys, y'all want to walk around, hot boys? Then be the hot boys. You know, I, I said that in the video. I was kind of, when I saw the hot boys change and logos and hats and T-shirts and all of this stuff, starter jackets, whatever. I said at first, I don't, hey, I didn't really like it. You know what I'm saying? 
Now, because I'm an old school type of guy, you know, you gonna name nickname yourself. Hey, the hot boys should have been named from the fact that these boys just cre- creating so much pressure, so much sacks and stuff like that. That 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 the fans would be saying, "Hey man, these boys kind of hot." Let's call them the hot boys. But since they named themselves, that's okay. Whatever they need, whatever they need psychologically, mentally, to be a unit, then let them do it. Let them go out there and be the hot boys. Be on the same page. But for dog sure, let this know for one thing from Law Nation Sports. I'm a cowboy fan. (laughs) <laughs> Not a high boy fan. So they better figure out how to win. And that's the reality of it. Yeah. Uh, Dallas Sports, 19 of 77. But they want to be doomsday defense of the 70. Law, uh, agree. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that they would. Be like the dude. Let them be the 2020-22 through 2023 season Cowboys. Uh, let's see what my guy, 14 personnel right down the field show we're here and going to win. Yeah. Uh, Steven Jordan says we need the old Dak true stat entering into the season. Dak was the third lowest in the NFL uh, Yeah, in history uh, ratio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's listen to more. I hear your point on him playing with a thumb injury. I just have a hard time with the number that he is leading the NFL in interceptions and he missed five games. That's a lot of games to miss to still lead the league in interceptions. I would just just quickly share that interceptions, like blame can go around. You go watch Dak Prescott's interceptions for the last month. How many of them jumped off of a receiver's chest or off of a receiver's head? Breaking news, a quarterback thinks interceptions can be blamed on others. We have... Oh man, uh, look, look, look. Shout out to the lady that's on the panel. But Matt Houseback speaking troves. You know what I'm saying? Like, we get all of that. It'll be a different story. I ain't going to be sitting out here placating that I, 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 I'm looking at James Washington as, as a solution. I'm looking at my guy coming off of an ACL situation as a solution, Michael Gallup, right? And I'm looking at who who else? Noah Brown. Law, you just making excuses. Law, you just making babies of excuses. Well, who's beating down the door for those guys right now? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's just how it goes. But, yeah, you have to understand that without any relation. Without any relations with those guys during the offseason, people are acting literally like Michael Gallup was out there in a training camp preseason with Dak Prescott. No. <laughs> and Noah Brown, he was he had more of a rapport with Cooper Rush than he had with Dak Prescott. You know, you know who Dak Prescott boy was during the offseason? Not even Jalen Tober. It was Dennis Houston. This is information that was privy to those who went out there to Oxnard, right? Who said, man, who's this undrafted rookie? Oh, that's Dennis Houston. In week one, they attempted to go to Dennis Houston. Uh, Alex, shout out to you. We need number 11, Master Parsons. <laughs> Master Parsons, okay, uh, to be the ball, to ball out. Yep. Yep, we do need that. Appreciate everybody for jumping in. Got a thousand Alex people watching. Alex got four dollars and ninety nine cents. Thank we y'all. Need number eleven, Manster Parsons to ball out. We need them. We need them boys to ball out. Stop stat chasing everybody. Cowboys play their brand of football. We will be unstoppable. But they got to believe in themselves. They do. And, you know, one of the things that I really love more than I uh, like is when our legends and when our greats start speaking out, right? And the answer to this, it was on Pick 6 Podcast. Shout out to uh, my guy, Emmett Smith, who, who got a few hardwares under his belt, you know, who I kind of listen to. You know, shout out to him. Shout out to him all together. Let's see if we can pull this up right quick. Appreciate all of you guys for jumping in and being part of this one. 
Let's go. Let's listen to the play. Not the playmaker, but Emmett. McCarthy, does he has the ability? I think he does. But he has to go within himself to understand what his limitations are and not impose his weaknesses upon the whole overall team and, and, and make sure that he's not playing within whatever weaknesses he may have. He understands his strength and he understands his weaknesses. So does every coach. But they also understand what the players can do and what they cannot do. So to be on your game, you have to do what is right for the entire team, not necessarily what is right for you individually as a coach. Now, with McCarthy, that's... So that is uh, the question they ask, is Mike McCarthy the right guy for the Cowboys? And everybody have a weakness. Everybody have a flaw. But the person or the or, or the individual that understand their weaknesses and not to exploit them are the better peoples on this world. Everyone have a chink in the armor. There's no one that's walking around flawless, you know. But you got to work on to that thing until you defeat it. Show of hands who had problems speaking in life, right? I stuttered when I spoke. I was a very shy kid. You can't believe it now, right? Y'all be like, man, can you hush? <laughs> you know, I speak, I look into it, and I understood that in order for me, in order for me to achieve the levels of greatness, I got to overcome those things. So it was difficult for a long time being the middle child too, right? Bigger brothers over you, then got someone under you, right? You got the levels of expectations, to be like your older brothers and then also the younger brothers under you. You got to make sure that you set the example that you can be the beacon light of hope. Right. If you're a middle child out there, let me know. <laughs> let me know in the chat. But you, you got to fight your weakness, even if they are exposed. Challenge them. Challenge them. So that's what the Cowboys did as it relates to those penalties. We done challenged that part of it. Got that up out the paint, right? It took us three years, right? But we got there. Now, what was another weakness for the Cowboys? Back-to-back -back playoff experiences. We, we, we done mastered that. We haven't did this since 06, 07. And if we, we start talking about being double-digit wins, shoo, and back-to-back -back seasons, we haven't did that since 94, 95. So we are challenging ourselves to overcome our weaknesses. But when we do those things, the adversary, the, the haters, the pundits and critics like to destroy what you done accomplished and what you achieve. They like to remind you of your pitfalls. They like to remind you of your shortcomings. They like to say, well, you got to be delusional to think that this year will happen. This year is the ultimate year for you. You got to, you got to understand, law. You ain't the firstborn son. You the middle child. You stutter when you speak. You the same little old law, right? No. You destroy your weakness. And for those who are out there that saying that, hey, this team is only at this level. Well, if you believe it inside of you, there's a substance that can grow. And there's a belief that can also grow. All you need to do is believe in yourself. It don't matter how many years you've been without the ring. It don't matter what ground you was drafted in. Look, Tom Brady is a walking truth of that right now. The man got seven rings. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven rings. And what round he was drafted in, ladies and gentlemen. If he believed in his weaknesses and never challenged them and only listened to the pundits and the critics, he would have been out of the league his first year or his second year. He would have been out of it in his third year. Shout out to you, 24-7 Cowboy. Thank you for your support. Let the AI speak on that. 24 backslash 7 Cowboy, $19.99. Law. Kellen Moore better come with IT. Play that conspiracy. Musical note. Musical notes. Cowboy conspiracists have been saying that Kellen Moore has been saving a special play. Yeah, playbook, and I think she cut off a certain uh, numbers there. The conspiracy theories, you know, um, holding back, saving all of the good stuff into the moment. 
I mean, you are who you are. Now, if he throw out a new wrinkle now, then, hey, you know, that's what we can lean on and hope for, right? <laughs> but I, I believe that a team should practice their, their exotic plays or their special plays all year. The thing is, when you're good or great to what you do, then it'll be hard for a team to stop that because that's what you do. It's kind of like, hey, man, hey, Steph Curry, man, save all your threes for the finals. No. On a perimeter, he's open. He's going he gonna to release it. Drain, wet city, put you to bed. You know, that's just what he do. But we don't want to see all of a sudden when you get into the playoffs or the finals, hey, man, let's, let's drive Curry inside the paint. Nah. When you good or, or when you good to great at what you do, you do that. You attack that. You do what you do. Please, Kelly, no trick play. <laughs> no trick fox in the play. Yeah, 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 Jay Walker. Appreciate you for that super chat, man. You right with that, dog. You are. You are. None of that trick stuff, man. No trick. <laughs> but both of y'all, you, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No trick plays, man. Illuminati. 85. Can't wait for your draft breakdown tomorrow after this L. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for your support, though. But that is what the naysayers will all say, right? There's no opportunity. There's no chances for this team. Look, look at his pedigree. But I come here to tell you guys right now, that it's always the person that we can't see, the invisible head, the grand creator of it all, right, that, that strengthens the heart or softens the heart to make those who are not qualified qualified. You know what I'm saying? To get them into a rhythm, to get them going. But it all starts from the belief system. Believe in yourself, Cowboy Nation. And that's just how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Steve Jordan, so he got six rings. I thought he had seven. So he got six rings. Tom Brady got six rings. I thought he had seven of them. <laughs> well, he got six rings. I thought he got seven. Dude, Tom Brady got six or seven. Y'all let me know. I thought he had seven. Believe. Yes, indeed. Appreciate y'all, man. Let me get on up out of here. I thank y'all so much for jumping in. I got to spend a little time with the ladies over here in Law Nation uh, side of the world. I thank y'all so much. But it's all about believing. It's all about understanding. It's all about knowing where you are from and saying that, hey, these are the things that I can do. Hey, on my way out, I, I want to tell y'all this right quick, though. There was a great movie that came out in 94, 95, I believe. It was called The Lion King. The Lion King. And in that movie, or well, that picture, Simba, who is the king, always been the king, flee from his duties at a very young age. They thought that it was over with. They thought that it was done. As far as that area. When the lions and the hyenas scar his own flesh and blood set him up for failure. Kind of like a third of the cowboy nation. Right? After Mufasa them passed away. He's out there living his own life. I'm talking about Simba. They said Akuna Matata. You know, he's hanging out with a pig. He's hanging out with a pig. Lions eat pigs, right? <laughs> Timon and Puma eating fruits and vegetables Simba Loki was the first vegan <laughs> true, true, true true thoughts out there he was the first vegan out there <laughs> you know he was the first vegan lion but then there was a person that reminded him who he really is you see he saw something that he couldn't see so what I'm saying is that Sometimes things got to be revealed upon you. He said, you Mufasa's boy. I forgot that monkey's name. But he said, you Mufasa's boy. The true king. And he said, no, I'm not. How you know about that? You look just like him. So he took him to a river. And he saw the reflection of himself. And his father told him, Simba, remember who you are. 
You are my son, the one true king, right? But doubt settled in first. When he saw the reflection, he said, oh, that's just my reflection. That's not my father. But the monkey told him to look deeper. Remember who you are. You are my son, the one true king. Remember, you know. So if the cowboys just remember who they are, the America's team, the team that everybody, mama, uncle, cousin, Tupac, and Biggie climbing out of the grave, a lot of things that happened in 1994, 95 era, right? <laughs> but the Cowboys still relevant to this day. A lot of people hate us and a lot of people love us. We are the most talked about franchise in this land, in these parts. But all we got to do is remember who we are, you know? <laughs> Let's go, Cowboy Nation. Dak Prescott, Zeke, Tony Pollard, C.D. Lamb, any of those boys, Dan Quinn, I wish Dan Quinn would have said, yeah, I would love to interview, but right now I got things that I got to get out of the mud, and there's no time for me talking. Everyone have a reason, but results are what matter. And I got a destination with greatness right now. And I can't be looking in this interview or looking into that interview. Yes, the opportunity is grand, but nothing is like what I'm doing now with these group of guys. So they let me know that his heart is in the middle. And I can't fault the man because we live in a capitalistic society, right? But when you root it in and you all in, there's not a phone call that somebody can make right now to veer you off there's a reason why they say shout out to you let's say williams happy birthday to you on this great day there's a reason why they say don't text and drive there's a reason why they say hey put it on speakerphone when you drive because they want your focus they want your attention on what you need to do keep your eyes front and there's a reason why your rear view mirror is smaller than the windshield because you're supposed to only look back at your past and you're heading toward the future and the goal. You can't drive via the rear view. You need to see what's in front of you. And if the cowboys and goodness and grace and mercy that I'm speaking right now, if y'all understand this dream, if y'all understand this promise, if y'all understand that even when my music stops, I'm going to keep going. There's nothing that can stop the law. But I'm going to tell you guys right now is how strong and how hard is your determination is to make things happen. You got to get it out of the mud right now and right tonight. Write this down. I've been saying this for years now. It helped me out when I had to look through the front shield, right? And not the rear. I had to put the tape in and say, hey, if Les Brown can do it, I'm no different than him. Law Nation can do it. Let me give my oodles and noodles, even though I'm sleeping out of a car, right? <laughs> I know y'all know the story like the back of your hand now. But it's all about determination. It's all about your heart, soul, and sinew at this point. And if you want to leave it on the table, let's get it and pick it up. If you want a thing bad enough to go out there and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it. If all of your desires of it makes you quite mad enough that you don't get tired of it, and it makes you hold all other things tardy and cheap, if life itself seems empty and useless without it, and all that you scheme and dream is about it, if you'll gladly go out there and sweat for it, fret for it, and plan for it, and lose all terror of your mind for it, if you would simply Go after the thing you want with all of your capacity, strength and scargacity, with faith, hope and confidence, and stir pertinacity. If neither cold, private, or famish, or fame, or sickness of your body or brain can turn you away from the thing you want. If dark and grim and besiege and beset it with the help of Almighty, you will get it. Write that down, store that in your heart. And even though you remember who you are, you are my son. 
the one true king is not over with you know Simba still had to go back to his land and the boys that was rolling with him Timon and Pumbaa and his new boo thing they were saying hey is this is what you got to fight for <laughs> oh you talking about a fixer upper that's what they were saying but they knew that that was once the land of Pride Rock. That was once his territory. And as delusional as possible as it could be. And as crazy and, and as insane that I'm taking a cartoon movie and I'm giving you guys motivation from it. Is that he was willing to die for it. He was willing to fight for it. He didn't say, well, I'm outnumbered. They got hyenas. They got Scar out there. They got all of the pride. Pride Rock. He was willing to fall on the sword for what he believed in. And the truth of the storyline is that even Timon and Puma, a pig and whatever that other thing is, Timon is, whatever he is, you know, <laughs> they were willing to fight for it. They were willing to die for it because they rolling with their boy Simba. So who are, are y'all willing to fight for it and roll for it? You know, <laughs> you know, let's go, Cowboy Nation. His new boo thing was his sister. I thought, I thought he went on and knocked her up. I didn't know that was his sister. But y'all know how it goes. <laughs> well, y'all with Scar, you know. Y'all, y'all, y'all with the hyenas. No, 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 no. Fight for yours. Let's go, Cowboy Nation. Be like Simba. Remember who you are. <laughs> Don't be hitting with the emotional damage. <laughs> Let's go. Akuta Matata, y'all. <laughs> it's a peri dog, okay. The warthog, the warthog and the peri dog. Going to battle. <laughs> Roll those credits, baby. Why somebody gonna be like, look, let me tell you about this Timon and Puma. Let me tell y'all about that storyline. I watch, I'm gonna get some conspiracy theories that hey man, that storyline was stolen. <laughs> That's an old African story, man, back in the day. They just stole it from us, you know. <laughs> it is what it is. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all so much, man. <laughs> Let's get it. Shout out to you. It's a meerkat. Appreciate you, Stelio. See, to contextualize it, we were all different. One a lion, a meerkat, and a warthog. All fighting for the same cause. Pride rock. Let's go fight for it. We may not all look alike, but baby, we bleeding. This pride rock right now. Ain't no party like a cowboy party. You're right. Come on. Good versus evil. Cowboys versus the Tom Brady. Come on. Low key, I'm still mad about Dan Quinn and his opportunity, though. <laughs> Shout out to all that supported this, man. Your name is on the screen. I appreciate y'all. Hit that like button. Come on. <laughs> I'm here roll along. Yeah. I be really in the field, let her rush, I let her feel lately. I just wanna run it up. Run it, baby! John Jones, shout out to you for the five dollar super chat. Keep your eyes on the prize. You can't rent you can't win this race. Looking at the rear view mirror. <laughs> Come on. Non-violence, non-violence. Thank God Almighty. Uh, non-violence, free at last, free at last. Shout out to Dr. Martin Luther King. Lately, I just wanna we need Michael Max Day too. You know, we need to get that out there going. And a Megas Evers Day. We need to have. We need to have all of these fallen soldiers days. You know, we're gonna take. The, you know what? I was out there in the parade today, and I realized, man. 
there were some people, man, out there that was really hustling. And I love that spirit over there. You know, I said, man, they're going to take advantage of this day. And I love it. <laughs> That's our people. I said, my people. I love my people. There was people slinging cotton candy, candy apples on the slide over there. I said, man, that, that's what I like to see. My people out here hustling. Let's go. Hot boys. <laughs> hey. Go. Oh. Shout out to Coretta Scott. Beast mode. Fire in his eye. I am awake. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Underscore Red Rebel 95 underscore two dollars. What up, Law Nation? We win today 41 to 24. Clapping, flex bicep, tumble glass. If a baby grain can't fly, fly on, fly on, fly on, fly on, fly on. When you pray for rain, you got to deal with the mud, too. You have to be your biggest fan. And Illuminati really 85, $2. Really dollars. Doc will be Doc, working. two picks and a late mistake. 24 to 20. I just have to follow that. Because you don't know who you're going to be. Who you're going to be. Who you're going to be. Steven Gonzalez, $4.99. We need to press the corners and collapse the gap. Stutter drop in sex is due to QBs releasing the ball quickly. I have a message for the Bucks. We coming. Mm. Good super chat there. Steven Gonzalez, $4.99. We need to press the corners and collapse the gap. Stutter drop in sex is due to QBs releasing the ball quickly. I have a message for the Bucks. We coming. Because you don't know who you're going to be. Solid drop of Jesus Christ Ministry $5. This whole playoff should be a revenge run against Brady, the 49ers for last year and the Giants for 2008. I'm calling upset at Eagles Lowell.
Solid Rock of Jesus Christ Ministry $5. This whole playoff should be a revenge run against Brady, the 49ers for last year and the Giants for 2008. I'm calling upset at Eagles Lowell. Until next time, DC for life. If I offended anyone, charge it to my head, not my heart. Then understand this right here. Yeah, so it looked like I'm gonna be around here for a while. I ain't trying to be a daddy or nothing. But if you need some advice, feel free to talk to me. It's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. Well, what I'm saying is that there are known knowns and that there are known unknowns, but there's also unknown unknowns. Things we don't know that we don't know. You have to be your biggest fan. And when things are really tough and they're really rough and nothing's working, but there's something inside of you that says, I just have to follow that. Because you don't know who 